Good evening, everyone. Welcome to those in the gallery and to our councillors tonight. The meeting time start is 6 p.m. I declare the meeting open at 6 and I welcome, as I said, those present and advise that the meeting will be digitally recorded in accordance with the council policy, Government 017, digital recording of council meetings to record meetings of council to assist in the preparation of minutes and to allow live streaming of council meetings. I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we meet today, the Tomagina people, and to pay our respect to those that have passed before us, their history and their culture. We move on to record of attendance. Uh, 1.3, leave of absence previously approved, Mayor Walsh. Point two, confirmation of minutes of previous meeting. Could I have a mover for that particular motion? So please? moved. Could I have a seconder? Second. Are there any corrections or amendments to uh, those minutes, please? No. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Carried unanimously. Point three is declarations of interest. Are there any uh, councillors with a declaration of interest tonight or staff member? Nothing there. Okay, councillor announcements and report. I have uh, 4.1 announcements by the Mayor. I would like to say congratulations to Palawa woman Caitlin Johnson who was recognised last Friday with the prestigious honour of being named the Premier's Tasmanian Young Achiever of the Year Award. Caitlin is from La Poigna, attended Winyan High School and was a key member in Big Hearts Project O, which is a group of young women advocating for those without a voice, raising $12,000 for women and children experiencing family violence. Caitlin was the 2018 Tasmanian Indigenous Girls AFL, AFL team captain and is now studying a Bachelor of Science and Diploma of Music at UTAS. Caitlin said that her main goal is to inspire other young Indigenous women, in particular those from rural areas. I also wish to acknowledge the re-election of Roger Gench MP in the recent state parliamentary elections and who is a resident of our municipality. We have also the Mayor's communications. There's a recommendation there that Council note the Mayor's communications. Could I have a mover for that, please? So moved. Could I have a seconder? Are there any questions regarding the uh, Mayor's communications? Okay, all those in favour, please say aye. aye. Carried. 4.3 reports by delegates, none have been received. 4.4 uh, notification of council workshops, the recommendation that the council note the following councillor workshops. Could I have a mover please? Seconded. Could I have a seconder? Thank you. Moved to uh, councillor Bramage and seconded uh, councillor Courtney. Are there any questions or comments that any councillors wish to make at this point? Okay, all those in favour, please say aye. aye. Carried unanimously. Public questions and statements, point five. Five point one, responses to public questions taken on notice and none received. Public questions in writing, nil. Public questions without notice. Are there any public questions without notice for this evening? I have two um, from Cody Hutchison. The first one, is there any more information the council can provide on the Mayor's 14 week, please? Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> there you go, I'll learn. Sorry, Cody. You're excused. Um, thank you, uh, Captain Mayor. Uh, first question, so what was in today's agenda about um, Mayor Walsh's personal leave? So is there any more information the Council can provide on the Mayor's 14 weeks leave? Uh, thank you, Mr Hutchison. The Mayor is having leave because of health reasons. His um, request for leave was approved appropriately by this Council and that is the end of the matter. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, my second question is about the settlement strategy, which was on tonight's agenda. Um, I've got a bit to say about it, but I'm just wondering, can Council please advise why only a summary of the feedback provided to Council from the community as part of the Liverpool Waratah Wind Settlement Strategy consultation period was included in this agenda's attachments and not the full responses? So I'm just wondering where can we access what people said about it? I think that we'll take that um, question on notice and we'll be able to pro provide you with that information at a later time. Okay, thank you. Uh, my statement uh, is multifaceted, um, so it's just a bit of feedback. Um, I guess I made some comments about the Ballard Avenue sale and the justification that Council provided for that initially was based on the settlement strategy's need for land expansion, but the settlement strategy hasn't actually been approved. Um, it's up for um, debate tonight. Um, so I guess I'm concerned that this is another instance of public land being sold for housing development uh, in secret uh, at the closed council meeting. And I guess the question that, that rings in my head is what prevents council from deciding these kind of decisions um, in the open session of council meeting? Um, the Waratah Dam, um, Council has been really proactive in supporting the Waratah community and their struggle to retain the infrastructure. And I want to thank councillors um, sincerely for driving this support and leading the way on this issue, despite being put in a bit of a challenging, challenging position by Taz Water. Um, I'm just hoping that council actions are a model for best practice in supporting communities in this municipality and other struggles as well. And I look forward to seeing more of this. Um, and I'm really interested to see what council will do, uh, given that um, Tabs Water has basically offered the dam and it's um, in full to this council. Um, my other point uh, is a recent um, Facebook promotion of Labor and Liberal Party pledges, um, direct sharing of state election candidate posts. And I don't think that's something that this council should make a habit of um, because um, it's a, a direct advertisement of um, parties with particular agendas and I don't think this council um, should be uh, swayed either way. I think it should be politically neutral and represent interests of all residents. Um, I mean, sharing advocate articles is a bit borderline as well, but at least the info is going through appropriate editorial processes and presented appropriately. Uh, I've made comments online about that um, and no, no action has been taken. Um, last meeting that I was present, I asked questions. I uh, just want to thank the, the Mayor and the General Manager for their responses to that. And I'll conclude by just um, having a quick discussion around the settlement strategy. But um, I'm just wondering, is the Mayor still receiving an allowance while on leave? Or is the mayor going to take a 25% cut on his $70,000 mayor allowance this year because he's taken three months off? Um, that's just that's just what I'm thinking. Maybe there's not a response or appropriate response for that. Uh, but I think the municipality deserves a mayor that can put in 100% and not 75%. Um, and I understand the, the response given. Um, but... Um, Maybe my message for Mayor Wallace is if you can't do the job that you are uh, elected to do by your constituents, then maybe consider um, your future. Um, and the, the settlement strategy, so I provided a, a quite a, a considered response, I think, with the, the council officer's comments. Um, but I feel like the four days that were given to uh, analyze the changes made to it uh, wasn't really fair. There's not really a, a position for myself or the community to actually um, reflect on the, the changes, the, the little changes that this council's made to the settlement strategy based on responses and basically suggestions that um, minor settlements or new settlements can't be incorporated as part of the planning I think it's a bit of a cop-out. Um, I wonder at what point will rural communities and minor settlements actually get uh, represented in the planning process 
and you can say it's through the, the new planning scheme and the, um, the local provision schedule, but um, where is it? We're still waiting. Um, it's really hard to reflect on the planning process in totality without all of these things there, and it just it confirms to me that um, yeah, that only major settlements, as I think a ha pattern has emerged, are really the only places that are getting focus and attention. Um, and you all know the, the history of uh, my concern over the, the sale of the Freer and the Hall. Um, and I think uh, there's, a, there's a lot of examples where um, the transition between uh, rural settlements and, and minor settlements uh, is really um, an important thing for um, towns to consider. And if we're looking at reduced car dependency, I think we need to think about um, the impact of um, reduced car dependency for, for people living in rural areas. And I, I put forward a number of ideas. None of them were addressed in the, um, the responses uh, by council officers to those. So I'm just wondering where is the, the platform or the, the conversation going go to go to from there. Um, yeah, like I said, I've got a lot more to say, but where can I say it outside of the three minutes I'm given at a council meeting? Thank you, Mr. Hutchison. For anyone who uh, has a statement to make, we allow the three minutes. In fairness to um, everybody who's going to do a presentation at the council meeting, so I thank you for your comments. And I will add that you did ask quite a few questions throughout your statement, and one of those will I will answer tonight, and that is you asked whether the mayor should receive a full um, allowance for while he's away. Uh, on um, for he health reasons. Anyone who's employed does actually have access to um, sick leave and holiday pay. So I think that uh, in all fairness to the amount of uh, work that the Mayor has undertaken over the past several years to say that he should only receive 25% of his uh, allowance or wage or whatever is really quite dis disrespectful to, is quite disrespectful, thank you, you've had your say, is disrespectful to the is quite disrespectful to the man who has put in all that time and he has been a mayor that has um, committed to his community I think that um, the questions that you have posed maybe you can send those questions to the general manager and we'll see if those can be answered for you and uh, I think that um, that is where we will leave it with your statement tonight. Are there any further uh, statements to be made from the gallery tonight? Okay, thank you, we'll move on. We will now go into the planning uh, part of our meeting which is at 6.13. Um, Public questions without notice relating to planning matters. Are there any uh, public questions without notice relating to the planning matters, please? Public statements? No. Okay. Okay. Could I have your name, please? Sorry, my name's Hannah Mackay. Um, I think it was about 30 seconds to my council officer who did come in for me. Um, I'd just like to make a statement that the extra space in the large house would be to support my parents and my brother with extra space, my disabled brother, um, and have a mother and daughter space as well, a large house. Thank you. Thank you. So, councillors, moving on to 6.3, the dwelling extension located at 14 Somerset Esplanade, Somerset. Could I, the recommendation is that uh, the council uh, um, grant approval for this, for the dwelling extension. So, could I have a mover, please? So moved. Could I have a seconder? <laughs> Thank you. Moved by and, uh, Councillor Courtney and seconded by, <laughs> seconded by Councillor Edwards. 
would uh, you like to open the debate? Do you have comments that you would like to make, please? No, I think most of the um, recommendations obviously made by the planning officer have reflected what needs to happen for it to go ahead. I don't see that there's any issue with the planning being approved. I don't see that there's anything that we need to review outside of the recommendations of the officer. Thank you, Councillor Courtney. Are there any speakers against this particular motion? Other speakers? Thanks. Councillor uh, Highland. Um, yeah, only just to point out the, the representation uh, and it was uh, very well responded to by the planning team that uh, the upper floor is already set 14 metres from the rear boundary uh, and overlooking and privacy matters only can only consider only will be considered when the dwelling is within three metres so all covered off and the other question I know is off the air but uh, I'd support the motion. Thank you Councillor Highland. Any other comments from anyone else? So nobody spoke against the motion. Could I put the motion, please? All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. <laughs> against? <coughs> Carried unanimously. Six point four is the replacement outbuilding and garage located at one three five three Aldina Road. Um, the council, in accordance with those uh, section 51, 57, approve a replacement outbuilding. So could I have a mover for that particular motion, please? So move, please, as per the recommendation. Could I? So moved, Councillor Highland, seconded, Councillor Bramich. Councillor Highland, would, do you wish to uh, open any discussion or debate? Um, there's only one point that I'd like to make in regards to uh, the issues that are obviously landowner issues uh, and should, and I think we've been told they should obviously be sorted out, get themselves around today and, and deal with what sort of issues. I would support the motion. Thank you. Is, is there anyone who wishes to speak against the motion, please? Councillor Bramich? No, not against it. Yeah, look, I'd urge councillors to support this. I guess it's like anything. Sheds and that wear out. And I think it is the farmer's right to be able to replace it. So I just urge councillors to support the motion. Thank you, Councillor Bramage. As there have been no speakers against the motion, I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? <coughs> Carried unanimously. That concludes our planning matters at 6... <laughs> 19. <laughs> so we now go back into our council meeting and matters raised by councillors. Um, point 7.1, 7, 7 responses to councillor questions taken on notice. Councillor Fairbrother, the Waratah Dam, there is a response there. And 7.2, councillors' questions received in writing. There have been none. Councillor questions without notice. Are there any questions from the floor, please? Is, is yours in relation to Waratah Dam? Okay, you, you, go, the, you go first. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Deputy Mayor or Acting Mayor, I do have a question in relation to the Waratah Dam. Perhaps it is pertinent that it follows on from the communication from uh, Mr Brewster from Taswater, which was the item 7.11. Um, my question is, what is Council's next plan of action, is, is the question. If I could foreshadow, perhaps, uh, I do recognise that the next item after this one is notices of motion. Um, if I could ask for a little bit of latitude from, from the Chair, could I foreshadow, perhaps, that 
a, a motion or a notice of motion is it's perhaps perhaps like uh, the previous speaker in the public gallery, perhaps my question is multifaceted because it's in part a statement as well as a question. I'm trying to ascertain where we go as a council with Waratah Dam. The way I see it, we have a number of options. We can do nothing. Or Mr Brewster points out that we as council have a number of other options. One is, is that as representative owners of Taswater, we go to the other owners and ask the remaining owners whether Taswater can continually maintain the Waratah Dam in its current or present condition. Uh, I guess what we'd be relying on when we ask that, if we do ask that, is we're asking Taswater to adjust their or alter the shareholder letter of expectation. So that's, for those councillors that don't understand, my understanding of it is is that we as a, as a part owner can direct the board of Taswater to undertake certain actions. One of those could be to, to direct or seek the, the authority from the remaining representatives and with their support direct the board of Taswater to alter the shareholder letter of expectation to continually maintain the Waratah Dam until such times as the interest from the party that I believe is interested in the water supply that provides the dam at Waratah, those, those interests or negotiations have, have been exhausted. So acting there, I'm sorry, sorry for the protracted, multifaceted, I'm not sure whether it was question or statement, um, or, or notice of motion, perhaps the, the general manager could perhaps provide a response to my question yeah. and perhaps as a, as a council we could work through the issue. Uh, thank you, Mr General Manager. Yeah, uh, through you, Acting Mayor. Um, I guess the response will need to be in two, two parts. The, in terms of what happens next, this letter was obviously only received uh, last week just prior to the um, compilation and distribution of the council agenda. So it would be um, an item listed for workshop um, in future weeks for Council to formulate a position and I would anticipate a report will then go to the June Council meeting for Council to make a formal decision uh, as to what actions it will take, um, if any. So I, I see a workshop discussion and then a report to the June meeting as the next steps. Um, obviously if anything needs to occur um, prior to then, um, that can be actioned appropriately but at this point in time we also have a motion on the books uh, that you raised previously around um, approaching um, the the current owner representatives uh, and we've been holding off on that particular action until uh, determination is made on the appeal process um, in relation to the, the dam so we'll wait and see what the outcome of the appeal is before we action that particular um, matter. In relation to can we put something on the agenda tonight, I don't believe we can. Um, it needs to satisfy obviously the three requirements around receiving um, qualified advice um, and the fact that it, it, is, it is urgent and I think it, um, given that we've got to 30th of June, I think it would be hard pressed to, to argue that it need to go on tonight. It could essentially wait to the, to the next council meeting, so. Thank you, Mr. Jim. Councillor Fairbrother. Thank you for, the, for that response. Uh, a supplementary question on the same topic, if I may. Um, the question is, would you be able to, would council staff be able to advise where the appeal process is at for those people that made a submission to the, or has, has there been an, an official appeal lodged and if, and ask the question, does council staff know where that appeal process is at the moment? 
uh, through your acting mayor, it, there was an appeal lodged. Um, so I believe that the the views of the Waratah residents were compiled into to one appeal um, and lodged in that manner. And I guess for one of a bit of phrase, I think it, um, there's an argument around like it's whether or not it'll be accepted or not. Um, yeah, around a, a technic technicality around who signed on the bottom of the of the appeal. So um, my understanding that will work its way through. I haven't heard the outcome of that. Uh, hopefully that will be resolved soon and then it can be determined accordingly. But um, I understand certainly one appeal has certainly been lodged and um, we're waiting to hear the outcome of that. That certainly was not from, from Council. Uh, thank you. Um, my second part of my question was, uh, do we know the timeliness of it all? The reason I asked the question, I am aware that the it is due the next representative meeting of TAS Water is scheduled for, for June. Um, so perhaps, um, I, I guess my questioning is around, is framed around yep. having in mind that the June meeting is, is a I believe what a quarterly meeting mm -hmm. that that is coming upon us, and uh, yeah, I guess the if you would be able to indicate perhaps the timeliness of the appeal process in relation to the June Taswater representatives meeting. Yeah, through the chair, that is a, a very valid point. Um, I'm I'm not aware of the time frame of the appeal but we can certainly make some uh, inquiries in that regard um, because it would be important to know whether or not um, it will be determined prior to the uh, the next meeting of the owner representatives. Councillor Courtney. Um, Councillor Fairbrother's actually taken two of my questions. So <laughs> what I wanted to say was going to be around the questions I had. Um, my first question was going to be, did we have an, uh, uh, an outcome on the appeal? And do we have any likely date on the outcome of the appeal? So obviously that will now be on the record. We'll see whether we can get a response for that. My other question was, what's our next course of action going to be? Um, mine was more uh, around the concerns that I have that they're, I feel like they're playing games a little bit and saying to us, well, we're going to decommission it either way. So you can take it on if you want, but we're still going to decommission it, which leaves us in a really bad position with the people of Waratah because obviously we want to keep the dam, but Taswater are making it almost impossible for us to keep the dam without taking ownership. And even if we do take ownership, which is cost prohibitive, they're going to decommission anyway. So I feel like they've just pushed us up against the wall and, and left us out hanging. Um, so my question would be exactly the same as um, Councillor Fairbrothers, and I assume we'll hear in due time what our next course of action is. And I'm guessing that's going to be on the timelines around the lodgement of the appeal and when we hear back from that. But I'm, yeah, I w wanted to get it on the record through those questions that I wasn't very happy about the fact that Taswater, I feel, of playing games and um, forcing us to take a position they know darn well we can't take. And that's not fair on our residents and it's not fair on the councillors around the table here tonight. We've done everything we can. And we know that there's interest in the dam. We know that there's no reason to not go and do another risk assessment. There's no reason to do anything until we hear the results of the appeal. So to turn around and say, well, either you suck it up and take it on and we'll de decommission it anyway, d just a really poor response. So I'd like to know yeah, what our next step is. Thank you, Councillor Courtney. Are there any more questions without notice, please? No, thank you for those. So moving on to notice of motion, none have been received. Uh, nine, the reports of officers and commit committees, settlement strategy, there is uh, a recommendation there, two parts. It's quite a large um, set of attachments that you've been given to support this particular motion. Could I have uh, someone to move that motion, please? I'll move the motion. Thank you, Councillor Courtney. I second it. Thank you, Councillor Highland. Councillor Courtney, would you like to speak to the motion? I would. Um, I'm, I'm going to move the motion, but I, I have hesitations around it. I think the work that our council have done is, is excellent. I think what you've done, um, I don't know whether I should call you Ashley or Mr Planning Officer or, or what in the formal proceedings, but I think the work that we've done in it is really good. I think that we have taken into account what people have said, even though maybe not as much in detail as some would like. Um, I have concerns <laughs> about the bigger picture. 
So we can uh, uh, adopt our settlement strategy, but I know that this is still going to be potentially impacted by the changes to the state planning legislation and changes to the major project legislation and <laughs> changes if we ever get the coastal erosion report, climate change. I know that there's a lot. So this is, I just want to get up front that this is probably going to be a movable feast. And while we've done a really good job for our local council and we've tried to show where we want to go, that I think the residents need to understand that this is not embedded in concrete and I sort of wanted to get that across right at the beginning of this, emo this motion that we've done the right thing, we've put the work in, we've put it out there and I think we've done a really good job but this is not set in concrete because there's a so many other things. The planning legislation at a state level has been going on for, I don't, well since I've been here and I can't see that that's going to be done before I finish here given that that's in, um, I don't know, 12, 18 months so I just go, okay, don't don't get too attached to the idea that this is concrete and nobody's allowed to come back and address the settlement strategy. We can review this because I think that in due time we're going to have to. So I, I just sort of want that out there to the public. While this is what we've put forward, this could be impacted by things at a state level and I think it can be impacted by things like the ISEP plan if we're going to have to adjust to coastal erosion reports when they come out. So that's my on that one. Thank you, Councillor Courtney. Councillor Highland, you? Uh, yeah, just I'll just add a little bit, but uh, certainly what uh, Councillor Courtney said, uh, it's a movable document and there's a lot of other documents that ties in with it. And obviously without this planning that we've done now, uh, we cannot make any strategic amendments uh, to our council planning scheme. So. Uh, it's all ties in with a lot of things and uh, in regard to the uh, comment made earlier about the submissions, uh, it, it's only an overview of what we've got in here of the submissions, so yeah, uh, it is what it is and uh, it's not in concrete and it's a moving document, so we've got to make a start and we will continue to work on it as we go through. Thank you Councillor Highland. Is there anyone who wishes to speak against this particular motion? Councillor Fairbrother. Uh, don't want to necessarily speak against it just at the moment. If I could ask a question, uh, might better inform me before I speak. Uh, the question I'd like to ask is, is there some urgency associated with adopting this strategy tonight? Uh, through to you, I, I don't believe so. Um, no, not time critical. Um, thank you. The, the reason for the question is, to me, the elephant in the room is is the fact that uh, having a read through it, I take on board the comments about what a good body of work it is. I, I agree that Jenny, in consultation with our existing planning staff, has done a really good job with, with the report. Uh, reading through tonight's agenda, I perhaps was a bit like Cody, a little bit overwhelmed with the the, the amount of information that, that we have to consider tonight, not only with the uh, strategic or the settlement strategy, but the other the other documents, our adoption of our 2017 to 2027 corporate strategic plan, our environmental policy. Um, to name a few. The, the elephant in the room for me is the fact that, if you didn't know, at the moment we're going through a thing called COVID and COVID is touched upon in the report. However, it's very light on. To me, COVID, COVID, COVID or, or a pandemic has essentially changed the way we do things everywhere. Um, and, and it's not reflected in the current document. It's touched upon, um, and there's, there's two parts that I come across. However, I don't believe that we have truly reflected the impact that COVID is having or could have on our, the way we do business at Council from our environmental policy, our strategic planning policy. I, I think COVID and the way that it is and will 
impact on the way we do business needs to be recorded. If this document, and it's a settlement strategy, uh, is going to represent us till 2027, personally I'd like to have it about as good as we can get it. And in response to COVID, we've got a paragraph, I think at 4.4, which talks about much of the work that it is in the, the document happened as COVID was developing. I say that we, we're perhaps over the curve and on the other side, but we've, we've for me, um, experienced perhaps the worst of it. To me, that needs to be recorded in here, not so much about COVID, but pandemics because this might be one in the next 10 years, this might be one. I don't share the previous speaker's enthusiasm about this is a moving feast. My concern is that this is going to be once adopted, set in concrete, and I have a concern that potentially it could be used, the document, the settlement strategy, could be used a tool to restrict or restrain future development in some of our towns especially some of our urban areas, uh, rural, rural areas, should I say, uh, because there is some, uh, I wouldn't say negative comment, but there is comment made which could potentially be used as a tool for us to refuse some types of development. And that, that is concerning. And when you consider that um, our Cradle Coast Rural Land Use Strategy is already out of date and needs renewing. Um, and that document perhaps should be complete before we adopt our new Tasmanian planning scheme. Um, I just don't see the, the urgency for the settlement strategy. I too share the concerns submitted from the ga gallery there, there, are, there is a number of comments in there and I can, one jumped off the page is, is that perhaps I've got a pecuniary interest, there was a comment made, oh, there should not be a caravan park at Boat Harbour Beach. And I thought, ha oh, I would, I reckon I could nearly guess where that statement come from. Uh, there is one there, I own it. Um, the fact that somebody's expressed it and it's been recorded Point in the settlements. Madam yes. Chair, he's off the track. We're not building caravan parks. We're talking about a settlement. Uh, thank you. Uh, Councillor Highland, could you please keep to the point? Well, the point oh. is the settlement strategy does refer to that comment and it is relevant to the debate, is my point. The fact that the councillor perhaps hasn't read that particular part of the agenda and is ignorant of what the settlement strategies that he's advocating we adopt uh, actually contains is of no surprise and I'm disappointed for the point of order. Um, but there are, there are comments within the document that that are recorded that perhaps doesn't reflect the sentiment of the wider community and they could at a later stage be used to be pulled out to to be used against some form of development and that is that is my concern um, as well as those expressed earlier uh, they're, they're shared shared concerns that I have that was expressed in the the public gallery. The fact that we too as councillors have to digest 12 points which is about not quite 500 pages and then restrict our comments to th three minutes as well is also of concern. So my, I would like to foreshadow that we perhaps should put off to another meeting the adoption of the settlement strategy to allow the review to better reflect COVID and the impact that COVID might have on the settlement strategy of this municipality. Thank you, Councillor Fairbrother. Are there any more speakers for the motion at this point? Any other speakers against the motion? I'll call all right, yes. Um, Councillor Blamich. I have a <coughs> question if I might to you, uh, Madam Deputy. Is the 
tight on board with Kelso here, Bradley retired from Spa after the main event of the Queen's Block. Uh, so it's only right word. What impact could that have on what we are probably looking at? Is there any impact to it? Uh, or is things going to be things going to be set in concrete or, or what, what's, the, what's the go because I'm sort of in two <coughs> minds after listening to Council of Fair brother of what might happen Thank you Councillor Bramick oh, I'm not sure what will happen Councillor um, I guess COVID was only uh, limited in the response due to, um, I guess, the reveals that to date COVID has had limited impact on land use. Um, the document's been drafted in the way that it's going to be a living document and reviewed, um, similar to our other strategies recently. Central Road Development Strategy is up tonight um, for an annual review and um, potentially health check, essentially. Um, so this strategy would be dealt with in the same way, we'd be looking at it every uh, 12 months. Um, I guess another matter that's been raised is the regional land use strategy, um, which is a cradle coast or a regional um, document which does overarch this, but um, as part of the election campaign it was mooted that that would be reviewed, um, but you're looking at a two year time frame for that review. Um, so to have a document sitting essentially on the shelf until that's done, you'd have to rewrite the strategy after that rather than having something to, to work off of a basis and being able to, to update as you go. Um, so while there's no um, real time driver to have this adopted tonight, um, the reason we brought it forward to for tonight was to ensure that there wasn't too big a gap between a community consultation and making a decision so that people thought that yep, we are still working on this project, we haven't forgotten about everybody. Um, but there is no time critical um, point in time that we have to make a decision by. Um, the longer you leave it though, the, the less up to date it's going to be. Thank you. Councillor Courtney, would you like to close the debate please? I would, Madam Mayor. Um, I, just in closing, I, I recognise that, that you know there's concerns because of COVID impact, but I just want to make it clear that from my understanding, this is a strategy to help inform our planning scheme and it does not change planning legislation. So planning legislation as it is still stands. This is just a strategy to help us amend things in our planning scheme. So my understanding is the planning legislation that was will still be the planning legislation that is and this is a livable document. So if something changes with COVID, or if we get a coastal erosion report from 2019 from the state government that we need to adjust our planning scheme, we can. So my understanding is because this is a living document, this is written in a way that we, if we need to come back and review this, we can come back and review this. If we have something major that comes out of it, we, we can review it and we can amend it. So if we get something from the state government, if we get something from the ICEP outcomes, if we get something from the community that we feel that we need to come back and review this, we can. Is that correct? Yes. So the argument that there's um, things that might actually point to legislation, planning legislation issues, that's a separate issue. Planning legislation is different and outside of us doing a strategy to inform us for our scheme. So I, I can't see a reason to delay it given that if anything comes up, we can review it. That's just how I see it. Thank you, Councillor Courtney. I'm going to call for a division on this particular motion. All those in favour, please raise your hands. Councillor Highland, Councillor Edwards, Councillor Bradley, Councillor Courtney, Councillor Bramage and myself in favour. And Councillor Fairbrother, you're with, with us now. Thank you, carried unanimously. 
9.2 Central Area Development Strategies Annual Progress Update and the recommendation is that the Council note the progress of the projects recommended under the Central Area Development Strategies. Could I have a mover please? I'll move. Thank you Councillor Highland. Seconder? Yes, yeah, seconded. Thank you Councillor Courtney. Councillor Highland, would you like to speak to this particular motion? Yeah, I'd better have something to say if I... Yeah, it's obviously to do uh, with the central area and uh, same thing, you know, we, we've got to keep things up to date. It's a moving thing uh, given both in Burnie... Ah, in Burnie. We're not owners here. Um, in Somerset and Waratah Wingate. Uh, so the two bigger towns and uh, it's really relevant that we sort of keep on top of... Uh, uh, what's happening and uh, we need to be there to help you know the businesses and, and whatever and we need to do a lot of planning ahead um, and to up and to date we, I think we've done exceptionally well uh, with both our CBDs uh, and what we've done and we just need to uh, keep on top of it. Thank you Councillor Highland. Is there anyone who wishes to speak against this particular motion? Councillor Fairbrother, are you wishing to speak? Uh, I've got a question if I can. Go for it. Um, I think I'm on the wrong one. We're on 9.2, are we? You certainly are. Sorry, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. So you have no question? Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, carried unanimously. 9.3 is the Corporate Strategic Plan, which has three parts. To note the recommended changes, adopt the revised Corporate Strategic Plan and provide a copy of this plan to the Director of Local Government in accordance with Section 70E of the Local Government Act 1993. Could I have a mover to this particular motion, please? So moved. Thank you, Councillor Courtney. Could I have a seconder, please? No second. Thank you, Councillor Highland. Councillor Courtney, would you like to speak to the motion? <coughs> um, I'm guessing I went first because uh, nobody wanted to speak to the motion immediately. <laughs> 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 um, the only thing I would note, like obviously, um, you know, this is a good body of work and I <laughs> am really appreciative of the revisions that have included our ISAT plan and our waste management strategy to try and get, um, you know, the money that we spend on waste back recuperated in a, in a way that we're doing um, cost recovery. I think that a lot of the things that we've done are really good. The only thing that I would note, since I'm the one that's have moving it and having to speak, is that I'd like more investment in our IT services because I think that moving forward, um, not an, uh, I think this is not just a problem with local government, local government, state government, federal government. We don't invest enough in our IT services. And I think that this is a really good time for us to say, hey, we need to review this given the changes that are going on with the Bernie Council and TAS communications and contracts. And I think that... I know that this is a living document and I know that we're adopting this for 10 years, but if we could look at perhaps, I don't know whether we need to, to wait to, to approve it, whether we can just do this on the fly over the next 12 months, but I'd like to see before I leave here as a councillor, somewhere in documentation for our strategic plan that we invest more in our IT services. And I think that's where we're gonna be able to get kids out of school that are going to be able to give us a really good advantage moving forward in that area. So if we could l even look at maybe get, getting some trainees to come into council and for them to review our software and how we're delivering on, um, you know, workflow processes internally in IT services, I think this is a really good time given what's going on with Bernie Council and the, and the TASCOM stuff that we look at this as part of our 10-year plan because I know that IT is a heavy cost investment but it's one of those things that's like healthcare. If you do it right up front, it's not going to cost you a lot at the other end. So if we get the IT up right up front, then we're going to make a lot of cost savings in the way that we do business. 
So if we could just look at incorporating that in our 10-year plan and a heavier investment in IT, and I realise that's got budget ramifications, so I don't expect you to do that on this document, but if we could just make sure that that's in the next review so that it's in there before I leave here, that'd be great. Thank you, Councillor Courtney. Anyone wish to speak against the motion? Anyone wishing to speak for the motion, please? Councillor Edgewood. Um, I just want to say um, to Sam and her team that they have put a lot of work and effort into this and I know we workshopped this last week and I, I just come away feeling quite proud that we've got a great team of people um, in this, you know, in our municipal area that, you know, have got our back and, you know, our best, you know, best outcome for our municipal area. So, um, you know, how Sam explained it all to us and everything, um, yeah, it just made me feel really really great that we're in good hands. So thank, thank you, Sam and team. Thank, thank you, you Councillor Edgewood. Is there anyone else who would who wishes to speak for or against this particular motion? Councillor Fairbrother, which way are you going to go, for or against? Uh, sitting on the fence. Um, yeah, Acting Mayor, I've just got another question. Does our strategic document need to record the fact that ha how we address COVID moving forward? To me, to me, strategically as a council we we do best practice with we've recorded here what we do well um, i think that we need to acknowledge that in in the area of public and public health and environment we need to have a line item in in and around dealing with COVID in the best practice method um, strategically um <laughs> maybe <laughs> to me COVID impacts on our every day, every day, what we what we do, um, we come in, we record people that come into the building, we sanitise, we do all of that. Uh, we're supposed to be one and a half metres away from from one another, and it's supposed to be front and centre, and and it's not recorded in any of our documents that that is what we do. Uh, I'm just asking myself, should it be in these type of documents, given that? It covers off on public, it is a public health measure that we need to be doing best practice with. I believe we are. Uh, I just think that it needs to be recorded. That's all. Thank you, Councillor Fairbrother. Would you like to, Mrs. Mrs. Farrell will make a response to your, what Th you've asked about. Thank you, the uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, I, I just wanted to add a couple of comments um, just from, from what I've heard around the table in relation to this report tonight. Um, this review was really um, an interim review uh, and it was done by way of a desktop review. So <coughs> the document itself um, leans into the Sustainable Development Plan of 2015. Um, developed in 2015-16 and there was an extensive community consultation that sat behind that plan. Uh, just in relation to the COVID um, relevance to the document, Council has um, passed a resolution to include a review of the Sustainable Murchison Plan next year. So I think if we await the outcome of that review, that may um, potentially trigger another review of this document. So I think those concerns will be captured as a part of that process. Um, so this was this desktop review was really just to take into account any known um, strategies and philosophies that council have adopted to date that are not reflected in the strategic plan um, and hasn't really gone beyond beyond a desktop review at this stage. Thank you, Mrs. Searle. Are there any other speakers for or against this motion? No one has spoken against. I put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against. Carried. Unanimously. 9.4 Rates and Charges Policy and Debt Management Policy Reviews. There are four parts to this recommendation. Could I have a mover for this? So moved. Thank you, Councillor Courtney. A seconder. Second that. Councillor Edwards, yeah. Councillor Courtney, would you like to um, open the debate? Oh, no, I, I, I move to as s approve it as is. Um, I think that what we've done here is is maybe not going to be popular in the short term, but.
but I think this is the right thing to do. I think there's some um, changes that are going to happen with stormwater um, charges and with waste charges that initially the public are maybe going to be upset with us about. I feel that these policies need to be implemented so we don't end up in the situation where Bertie City Council are. I don't want to make decisions at this council to keep people happy to get myself re-elected. That's not what I'm here for. I ran for election because I genuinely want to be here to make the right decisions by the community ongoing for my children and their children. So I'm not going to make decisions that are on stormwater or wastewater and, and getting cost recovery on what we're doing that's going to leave us in debt and then more likely for us to lose our voice, our local representation as a council if we ever get to the stage where there's going to be amalgamations based on whether you're in deficit or whether you're, you're not. So I think this is not going to be um, perhaps a popular move, but I think it's the right move by the council. I think we've you know, done the right thing by the next generation and I think if we don't do it now, you, you, you end up in the position where you could have people that sit on the council and make these decisions based on whether they think that's going to get them re-elected and I don't want that. So if I'm one of the councillors that says, yep, I'm going to move this motion and I think that we should pass it and people get angry at me for voting for this for a very long time, well, so be it. This is the right thing to do. We need cost recovery for the services that we provide and this is ensuring that this happens from here on in so that we don't end up in the position that our neighbouring councillor is in. And I just think that's a real, the right thing to do and a really good job by the council staff to make sure that... I know there's so much work gone into this to make sure that we are getting cost recovery, that we're genuinely looking at what we provide and saying, well, that's how much it really costs us and that's how we need to get it back. So good on you for the work that's been done and if this makes us unpopular, then for, for, my, for my own, so be it. Thank you, Councillor Courtney. All right. Is there anyone who wishes to speak against this particular motion? <laughs> Councillor Fairbrother, have you have you indicated you wanted to say something or not? Oh, sorry. Your turn, Councillor Fairbrother. I won't pass up the opportunity, thank you. Um, for, for the benefit of the other councillors, Councillors in the past have advocated that this is a source of revenue for council that was not being accessed. If you go back through the, the records of agendas, uh, perhaps it was some of our budget discussions. I know Boat Harbour Beach, I've advocated that, hey, here potentially we provide a service but we don't charge the residents for. And that went on for a number of years. And we sort of said, hey, we've got this potential area. I don't know why it is, but all of a sudden, this year, we're going to do it. Um, don't know why, um, but, but equally, I'm wondering now, what is the charge going to be for those residents in Sisters Beach and Boat Harbour Beach, that, that new cost? Because much of the infrastructure has been provided by federal government funding, state government funding, particularly Boat Harbour Beach associated with the land, the the landslides there, the money that council accessed was was government money. So if we're about cost recovery, I was reading through this document asking myself, well, I wonder how much the, the Boat Harbour residents are going to pay for a stormwater charge. Is that going to be comparable with what Wynyard and Somerset charge or get, get charged? Because for me, the Wynyard and Somerset stormwater system is way more involved and the capital cost is more is greater than the stormwater systems at both Sisters Beach <coughs> and Winded. So we are, as I understand it, going to be on a cost recovery basis, but what is the cost that we are going to recover? Is that just a per household fee or what what does the what is the system's cost that we're going to recover? Nowhere in the document have I found that. So I guess we'll find out when we get our rates notice. It'll be, ta-da, here we are. This is going to be the cost from here on in. But I suppose perhaps for me, I like to dig a little bit deeper and sort of say, oh, okay, well, how did you arrive at that figure? Um, so I guess I'd like to flag that as a question on notice. 
um, how how do we arrive at the figure that will be charged to the residents? Will it be the same as Wynyard? Will it be the same as Somerset? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fairbrother. Mrs Searle, would you like to respond to that question? Uh, thank you through you, Deputy Mayor. Um, just the stormwater service charge will be set as Council's budget deliberation process. So um, we will have workshop discussions about that um, and Council will pass its rates resolution as a part of the annual plan and budget process. At this stage, it's anticipated that that um, that the Boat Harbour and Sisters Beach communities would be charged a lesser amount than Somerset and Wynyard um, that are currently charged to reflect the lower cost of service provision and a different level of service provided in those communities. Thank you, Mrs. Sir. Through you, yeah, and if I can add, um, that is articulated in the last paragraph of the um, that stormwater service charge section where it uh, indicates approximately a charge of 0.65 cents in the dollar uh, is cu currently being considered. The the Wynyard charge, I believe, is currently 1.4 and the Somerset is 1.37. So uh, at this point in time, um, less than half of what um, is currently being charged in those other areas. But um, as pointed out, that will be formally adopted uh, at the June Council meeting as part of the rates resolution. Thank you, Mr. GM. Are there any more comments from the floor? Anyone wishes to speak against the motion? Oh, Councillor Bramage. Yeah, won't be speaking against the motion. I just wanted to add that the four instalments will probably be good for a lot of people. I reckon a lot of people will be quite happy with that. That's all. Thank you, Councillor Bramage. There have been no speakers against the motion. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Against, carried unanimously. 9.5 is our environmental policy review. The recommendation is that Council adopt the environmental sustainab sustainability policy as attached with immediate effect. Could I have a mover for that particular motion, please? So moved. Thank you, Councillor Courtney. Could I have a seconder, please? Second, Mr. Thank you, Councillor yeah. Highland. Councillor Courtney, would you like to open the debate? No, I think it was just timely that we review the environmental sustainability plan to reflect what we've uh, um, worked on in the ICEP planning. So obviously this is af off the back of the work we've done in ICEP and it just needed to be done. So unless there's something major that I'm overseeing, I, th I think it should be adopted as is and it's a good body of work against our new ICEP plan. Thank you, Councillor Courtney. Are there any speakers against the motion? Well, I won't speak against it, but I'll ask another question. I didn't have the time to go back and have a look at ICEP and see how ICEP related to COVID because I would have thought that our environmental policy does actually reflect COVID and the COVID, on COVID impact on the organisation. So did you have a question? You did say that you had a question, Councillor Fairbrother. Well, I guess the, the question was, does does the environmental policy adequately reflect the effect COVID's having on the way we do business at Council? Thank you, Councillor Fairbrother. Are there any other speakers? Through you, Sorry, Councillor. Look, I, I won't comment specifically on the content of the um, ICEP plan, but just to reiterate a point that was made earlier, um, each of our strategy documents, we provide an annual update, um, and, and that also provides opportunity to uh, alter content or change as, as need be. Um, so ICEP will be the same. If um, my memory serves me correctly, um, ICEP was first put out, released on the 5th of June last year and adopted perhaps in July or August. So I'd imagine at the August Council meeting uh, there'll be an annual update on ISAP and progress against and, and commentary as to whether or not any of the content needs to be um, updated accordingly. So, um, yeah. Thank you, Mr GM. Are there any more comments from the floor, Councillor Courtney? I'd just like to make one comment. Weren't you the councillor that was on the ISAP committee with myself? Yes, that is correct. 
So is there is there a need for us to include COVID, which is a health issue, in our ISET plan, which is about our environmental policy? I'm just a little bit confused because I, if I had known that you wanted to bring this up, I would have been happy to bring this up and discuss it during that process. So just explain to me how COVID is relevant to the environmental plan and, and I may back you on it. Co uh, yes, Councillor Fairbrother. Madam Chairman, if I might reply. COVID to me is a public health issue. Public health is an environmental issue. So the two, the two go hand in hand. This, this review of the environmental pol policy should reflect our public health, which is it's out there in the out there in the environment. Public public health impacts on the way we do business. Um, it impacts on on all aspects of our residents. Um, the way the way we do business. Um, yeah, public, public and environmental health go hand in hand. This is an environmental policy. There should, to me, and maybe I just overthink things, but it should be reflected in, especially our environmental policy. And I said, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Whilst I've been a party to the discussions around the development of I without going back and having a look to see what's in there about, I can't tell you off the top of my head, sorry, I'm not an encyclopedia or a computer, but yeah, I didn't have time to go back and reflect, so I don't know. So that's, I'm just airing my concerns about, I think it should be in there, but it's not, so it's all good. Thank you for your comments, uh, Councillor Fairbrother. Councillor Courtney, was there anything else you wish to say? No, 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 that, that I understand where Councillor Fairbrother's coming from now. I was looking at the document as environment, our living environment, not also our health environment. So now I've got a better perspective and understanding of where Councillor Fairbrother's coming from. Thank you, Councillor Courtney. No one has spoken against this recommendation, so I'll uh, ask that you, uh, those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, aye. carried unanimously. 9.6 is financial report for the period ended 30th of April 2021. Could I have a mover for this particular motion, please? Yes, yeah, so moved. Councillor Highland, yes, so could I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Bradley. Councillor Highland, did you wish to um, discuss, make any comments or? Run a pretty good, very good reporting. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Highland. Does anyone wish to speak against this motion? Are there any questions that uh, needed to be asked about this particular report? Anyone uh, have any other comments? If not, I'm going to put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, <coughs> carried unanimously. 9.7, the senior management report. There are four parts to this particular motion. Could I have a mover, please? So moved, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Highland. Could I have a seconder? Seconded. Thank you, Councillor Courtney. Councillor Highland, do you wish to speak to this report? No, thanks. Sorry, you not at this stage. Anyone else have any comments or wish to speak against the motion, Councillor Courtney? No, I just obviously we're just noting the report, um, and I think that the move to put Councillor Highland in as the representative in Councillor Walsh's absence is a good move, given the work that Council Highland's been doing with the Waratah Dam and Cradle Coast, so, uh, um, Taz Water, sorry. So I think that that's a good position for Councillor Highland to be in, given the Cradle Coast Authority and the impact that that may have on what's going on with the dam and Taz Water. Thank you, Councillor Courtney, for your comments. Is there anyone who wishes to speak against the motion? I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against? Carried unanimously. 9.8 minutes of other bodies, uh, com committees, none have been received. 
10, uh, point 10 is matters proposed for consideration in the closed meeting. So could I have a mover for the, uh, that we resolve by an absolute majority that, um, to go into closed meeting to consider the following matters and they are listed there. So moved. Councillor Courtney, could I have a seconder? Sorry, who seconded that? Uh, Councillor Bradley. Okay, so we are closing this meeting at 7.10. Um, so all those in favour, please say aye. Against, carried.